wondered if Old Testament rules can apply to today and even help you live a better, healthier life. Let's talk about it. Today we're going to talk about an Old Testament law concerning mixed fabrics. Deuteronomy 22.11 Thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sorts as of woolen and linen together. Basically this law is saying don't wear mixed fabrics. Now why in the world would God make such a rule? I've never really seen any pastor quite explain such bizarre laws such as this. Why were they not allowed to wear mixed fabrics? Why was that a law? Well, this Old Testament law actually has to do with science that can apply to today. This is a doctor known as Heidi Yellen. She's a researcher who studied frequencies in fabrics. A doctor named Heidi Yellen did a study on fabrics and this was the conclusion. The human body has a signature frequency of 100 and organic cotton is 100. Therefore, you don't want to wear a garment under 100 that is lower than the frequency of the human body. A sickly, nearly dead person has a frequency of 15, and materials such as polyester, rayon, silk, and spandex register at 15. Science proves that any fabric worn that has a frequency less than 100, our bodies puts a strain on us, which causes disease, inflammation, and other sicknesses. The only super fabrics are wool and linen, both measuring in at 5,000, which energizes the body and helps fight disease. Linen is a super fabric. Like I said, its frequency is 5,000, wool is also 5,000, but when mixed together with linen, the frequencies cancel each other out and fall to zero. Even wearing a wool sweater on top of linen outfit in a study collapsed the electric field. The reason for this could be that the energy field of wool flows from left to right, while that of linen flows in the opposite direction from right to left. So yeah, when these two super fabrics are mixed together, they cancel each other out and the frequency goes to zero, from 5,000 to zero, which is incredibly unhealthy for your body. Can cause strain, inflammation, disease. Here's some facts about linen. Number one, sleeping in linen helps people fall asleep faster and deeper. Number two, it improves mood. All right, Shalom. All praise, is honor, and glory as always be unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahusha, by Hashem Dash which is the Paleo-Hebrew for the name of the Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days, the Creator of all energy being Yahweh, and that of His Son, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, being Yahweh Shai. These be the only names in which salvation may be obtained, whether you've been given the Spirit to receive that knowledge or not. I'd like to give double honors unto the elders and the apostles at GMS Grand Millstone, who do rule well through the Spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, who taught me this truth. And peace, love, blessing, salutations be unto the elect of the nation of Israel, beginning with 140 and 4,000 prophets, all the way down to the remaining elect of our nation prophesied to come out of this world to come out of this black and this brown culture and these lies and this deceit that we've received from the hands of this enemy man from the hands of this last beast system and return unto our true identity man our true culture you see which is that of the 12 tribes of the nation of israel man you see and more in particular a way to live that will establish life man which is what the laws of of the heavenly father which modern science as you can see still shows uh, uh uh still cosigns to man for lack of better words you see so you could go into modern and what did what did he say modern science was still no man you could go into every single thing within the law not just the mixed fabrics and everything is is gonna is gonna show that these laws establish life man you see from the matter of unclean meats, you're eating these unclean meats that, that, that you could still go and look up what happens when you when you do these things, when you eat these foods, when you consume them. And you bring forth disease, this, that, and the third, man. The act of sodomy. AIDS, you see. So this law was given to establish life, man. All right? And here it is. Esau, Esau goes all deep. Oh, yeah, this, this, man. All, hey, we were given the law. That's all we needed. We didn't even need to go deep dig deep into it and see how it works and, and that's that's the thing about science man it's beautiful all it is is the study of the creation studying the creation of the most high you see and that's and and, and and like i said when you go in to these different points within the law it's always going to co-sign to it man but we don't even need to do that <laughs> we were given the law we were given the way to live man we were given the keys to life man all right. This law was given to establish life on this planet, which is why Sirach Ecclesiasticus 19 and 19, the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. You see that, man? The creator created the creation, you see, and gave us the instruction manual on how to preserve life upon the creation, man. You see? 
And look around you, man. This is the condition of the world when this law is not obeyed, man. You see? That's like going and taking a car off the lot, opening up the manufacturer's instructions, and throwing that aside, and thinking that you know better how to take care of this car. So you decide to go put some salt in the gas tank rather than gas, man. Well, we're going to see how that works, man. And as I just said, look around at the planet. You've seen how it's worked in this planet. You see, this planet lacks true judgment, man. Going back to Job 9 and 24, the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. The true judges have been covered, which are the 12 tribes of Israel, man, which is why they were given the law, which is why this law is not established on this planet today, man. You see, this law is a very important piece to the doctrine, man. But we will not be able to keep it in perfection, which is why. We needed Yahweh Shai, and which is why we need to overcome this flesh, man. All right? Because we were bred to go off. You see? But before I get off topic, man, let's go ahead and keep going. It says, And they that do the things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. You see, that's what this will lead to, man. This law will lead to immortality. Why is that? Well, take a second, man. Think about what sin is. And let's grab it. This is 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. And it reads, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the, the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. That we so that's what sin is, man. It's not just doing something bad. It's when you break the law. It it's when you break the law of the Heavenly Father. You see? And what's it bring forth, man? What's, what's the wages of sin? Now let's go ahead and grab the next one here. We can go to uh, James. James has a good one. You also can go to Romans 8 or Romans 6. But uh, this is James 1. And verse 15. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. So you, you have that lust to, to, to break one of these laws, whatever it may be. So then when you act upon it, that's what the sin is. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. The wages of sin is death, man. So when you disobey this law, it brings forth death. You see? So how will this law bring forth immortality? <laughs> that tells you right there, man. You see? If we're able to keep this law in perfection, immortality is what will be achieved, man. And that's what's in store for the nation of Israel, man. Go ahead and grab a, this is the book of Hebrews. You can also find this and find this all throughout the scriptures, man. Prophesied all throughout the book. But this is the gospel, man. This is what it's all leading to, man. Hebrews 8 and 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. You see a new covenant with the northern and southern kingdom, the 12 tribes of Israel, man. That's what, that's what Yahweh Shai came for. That's why his blood was spilt, so we could be forgiven for having broken the first covenant. Now we're in this time of grace that we may repent. You see, he didn't come so you could do whatever the hell you want. He came so your ass could get right, man. So you could repent from our sins and from our transgressions, man. So that at his coming, those that are doing this, those who are learning how to rule themselves before they rule the world, will overcome this flesh and have this law, as we're, we're about to read. In perfection, man. Verse 9, it says, Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith Yahweh. So we broke that first covenant, man. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts. So these laws that when you disobey bring forth death, we are going to have written within us. So we will not die, man. You will have a ruling class over the planet Earth who will rule in perfection and establish this law throughout the entire planet Earth. And we'll go ahead and end with that. I'm going to grab that Micah 4 and we'll, we'll, we'll end with, with, with how that law is going to be established on the planet, man. All right. But going on, it says, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their heart and I will be into them a God and they shall be unto me a people. You see, we're going to be returned, man. Here it is, we've been put at the bottom, made to serve our enemies, the, the wicked at barren rule. They've ruled the planet off of their own laws. 
not of the laws of the Most High. And you see the condition of this world, man. You see, but now we're going to be returned. You see, that ruling class is going to be established once more. Verse 11, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. So the whole world is going to know the heavenly father. And how is that? Because these, this immor immortal uh, uh, ruling class is going to be doing what with that law that, that is written within them? What are they going to be doing with it, man? This is the book of Micah. Let's see, where are you? Book of Micah. You can find this in Isaiah, the second chapter, but we'll go ahead and grab Micah 4 and 1. It says, But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of all the mountains. So our, our mountain will be the highest mountain, man. You see, we will be the top government of this world. And it shall be exalted above all the hills and people shall flow into it. So all nations are going to flow unto us, man, unto our government. Why? Because we're the ones who are going to establish life, man. And in time, peace. Verse two, and many nations shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the power of Jacob. You see, all these nations are going to be saying this. Why? And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. It's not the conclusion of that new covenant say that no one will be teaching his neighbor any longer. Why? Because everybody so there's going to reach a point in time with which everybody's going to know the do's and the don'ts of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. They're going to know how to conduct themselves in this world, not according to their emotion, not according to what Esau taught them, not according to what 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 anybody in this world had to say, but according to what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has written and instilled within the mind and the body of the elect, man. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for the law shall go forth out of Zion. The law, man. Life, you see, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares. You won't, you won't have need for the weapon anymore, man. Why? Because eventually this will establish life. This will establish peace, man. And their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end it, man. Double honors unto the elders and the apostles at GMS Great Millstone. Peace, love, blessings, salutations unto the elect, man. Hey, that's why the book of Romans says what? We establish the law, man. The law is not done away with. We establish this law. You see, and in time, it will be established, man. So with that, shalom.